The initial requirements for Mad Max Fury Road was for a single RF video unit with a playground on set of no more than a few kilometers, with the director based in the video assist truck. The original brief for RF requirements was to provide a camera monitoring feed for video assist on both moving and stationary shots. The initial idea was a stationary receive point, albeit vehicle mounted, that was tethered to the video assist truck. After the initial runs of the Mad Max Armada exceeded 7 kilometers, this rapidly morphed into moving video assist vehicles, complete with mobile director and RF receive points that followed the action. This meant that good quality reception had to be achieved at two locations, one following the action and the other a stationary position to feed video assist for recording up to a few kilometers away. The RF trailer was purpose built for Fury Road by Greg Roberts of Lateral Linking. The trailer was self-contained with a diesel generator, air compressor and dual air conditioners. It was also fitted with self-leveling hydraulic legs to ensure the mast was always perfectly vertical. The RF trailer had the capability of transmitting on two channels of DVB-T in full HD to provide dual local broadcast TV signals for onset viewing, either while stationary or mobile. We called this Fury TV. Greg was tasked by director George Miller with having up to eight Arri Alexa cameras available live for video assist guru Zeb Simpson to record and replay. Zeb was able to show George cuts, loop playback, and show various live cameras including the action unit, even when George was mobile via Fury TV. Another task for the RF crew was comms for the grips department. This took the form of shockproof pods containing radios and power supplies with interfaces for the Telex belt packs and headsets worn by the drivers and camera operators. The pods were mounted to the required vehicles and powered from one kilowatt petrol generators. Using basic news gathering and race cam style concepts was the starting point, with a centralised receiving point with the camera mounted transmitters. From this concept, the RF trailer, nicknamed Brian, came to be. Fitted with up to eight diversity receivers, fed from an L-band block down converters from an array of antennas atop a 15 metre pneumatic mast. The mast was fitted with an antenna rotator, similar to news cruiser style, and a directional horn antenna, along with a couple of omni antennas. Block down converters were fitted to each antenna at the masthead and fed to L-band splitters in the vehicle and distributed to the receivers. Modulation technique was OFDM, similar to DVB terrestrial transmissions in the 2.4 GHz band. When the second shooting unit evolved, the complexity increased as the sets had to be linked with multiple video feeds and comms between them. Linking of the sites was done at packet level rather than baseband video, using carrier grade 13 GHz data links, which allowed multiple repeater sites without multiple mod demod. The installation of fixed links in an OB environment on temporary scaffolds or on the back or top of vehicles presented security and mounting challenges that often changed multiple times in a day. The 2.4 GHz receive units were VisiLink 2174 with quad diversity inputs. These units had L-band block down converters which were powered up the coax feed that also ran the RF down to the truck. Each unit came equipped with a range of antennas from omni to quite directional. Having these remote receivers enabled setups that would not have been possible if baseband RF needed to be run. Satellite receivers could be deployed to areas where the trailer could not reach and cabled back to the truck via coax. We sometimes deployed same band repeaters using different antenna polarization and lateral placement to defeat receiver desensing. The camera transmitters were L1500 VisiLink units with 200 milliwatt output and a proprietary encoding algorithm that enabled full HD quality with only a one frame delay. The transmitters were quite small and lightweight, enabling attachment even to steady cam rigs without operator complaint. Two of the units were permanently mounted to the edge arm camera cars. The placement of the antennas at nearly 5 metres above the ground, combined with the 15 metre mast on the RF trailer, enabled reliable reception at up to 10 kilometres in the flat Namib desert. 
But not all the filming locations were flat. Many key sequences were shot in deep ravines with steep sides. For these situations, the RF crew deployed up to 5 kilometers of fiber optic cable, with receivers placed at strategic points along the run. Because of the nature of the film, with a large number of moving transmit sources, reception in hilly terrain was a major challenge. Multiple receive points with RF over fiber transmission helped. RF over fiber worked by centrally locating receivers and positioning block down converters with antennas roadside over distances up to a few kilometers, battery powered. The receivers, being diversity fed, could then actively select the best reception point along with some nimble patching as the action moved along, providing continuous solid feeds. Simultaneous to this was an ever-growing fleet of follow vehicles fitted with a number of monitors, receivers, radios, and personnel that chased the action. These all had a small one kilowatt AC generator mounted at the rear of the vehicle for power. As the chase vehicles evolved, this made life more difficult for radio comms, with camera operators requiring contact with the director and also with base camp. Vehicle rollovers, crashes, and minor incidents were the norm both planned and unplanned, so overnight repairs were common. The entire event required dynamic solutions, often with very limited time necessitating out-of-the-box thinking. Availability of hardware was a constant problem given the remoteness of the site and extended shipping delays. Camera video sources varied from current model ARRI cameras to high-end digital SLR cameras in disposable situations. In summary, it was a bit like the Bathurst 1000 meets the Paris-Dakar rally. Two shooting units with eight mobile and airborne cameras with video, audio and comms linked to a common site. Four follow vehicles with RF receive and record, set lengths up to five kilometers long. A broadcast HD TV station in the middle of the oldest desert in the world with dust everywhere and salt laden fog. All in all, it was a big challenge and great fun.